Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Need for Speed Underground 2. Today we will we will be having a little looker at what we can do with a car. We're gonna do some outruns, and I guess you know I should have a timer around here. It should be really handy to have like a timer, uh, but I don't. So I guess for the next video I will be uh, <laughs> I, I will be getting a timer out. So upgrading your car. Well, that's not a hard thing to do, but first you need to find ra uh, not races, but shops. Now, I know where the shops are, both because I do have <laughs> a good map next to me, and because I just, you know, I, I know where they are, because I used to play this game like hardcore in the olden days. Also, there was a sign with an orange lion on it. That's actually a bank that is uh, from... Yeah, from, from Holland, from the Netherlands. Yeah. The Netherlands uh, have had a lot of international bank things going on. I guess you could say. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Van Man. Free candy man and stuff. I shouldn't make the same jokes as that guy because... If I do, you might as well go and watch his videos. Uh, one thing that annoyed me a bit about him is that he's got a really squeaky voice. For the rest, I, he's a top guy. Um, I'm of course talking about games and critics. Uh, he is with TGN, I think. The Game Network, yeah. Uh, he's okay. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's replied to my comments regularly. and You know. He's a nice guy. Ah, uh, but yeah, he's got a really, really squeaky voice, and that kind of, you know, gives give, give me headaches, if I, if I can be honest about that. Oh, and there's an info thing there. This is the body shop. Now, the body shop is there for, uh, you know, making your car look good on the outside. So, yeah, let's go inside and see what they can offer us. Fort Union Square. Ooh. Shiny, I guess. Say goodbye to stock, cause slamming and dressing is what it's all about. Make your ride distinct by throwing on body mods. Yeah, that. So, you can go and change the front bumper of your car. Now, I like the simpler ones, because they make the car look a little bit different. I love how the little shine detail, like right here, changes, even though that bit doesn't change anything. Yeah, so the sniper is basically the, the standard body kit with just a little extra splitter built on. The next bit is the stag, which makes the front look like a big gaping hole. And the Orion has these little uh, teeth, I guess you could say. And I don't like the teeth, I just like the sniper. It's it's really nice for a beginning, for beginning car. Now the rear bumpers, I don't really care about. I mean, it could be anything. But I li like to keep it like to keep it subtle, you know. Make the car look different than a standard car, but still keep the original look of the car like intact. So now we've got a sniper body kit built on. Um, spoilers, hoods, roof scoops, headlights. Actually, headlights have been given free. Now I don't like these these bug eyes because bug eye ha headlamps. You know, I, I just don't like the look of them. I just it's just a personal thing. I like to have these stock ones. I like them better. Tail lights. Now these oftenly make this look very ugly as well. I mean, Peugeots are known for having lights on the side of the car, which is okay. But you know, having an individual light on the side, like I'm pointing at the screen, but that, that's over the top. I just don't like the design of that. So we're going to go with the standard tail lights because... I think they're just much nicer. Uh, side mirrors, exhaust tips. Now the exhaust looks a bit different, like pointing down like that. Even in real life, you would see, like the the rear damper here or the rear muffler, I guess you could say. And then having the little pipe just facing downwards in a straight fashion. I mean, in real life, the muffler doesn't sit like that. It sits like lengthwise. But yeah. This makes it look much look much better. 
Because this looks a bit weird. So I guess we're gonna go for the backlash just to keep it simple. Now rims. There are a ton of rims to choose from. I actually like those. We have got BBS. NK. Gianel. Maxani. Lowenhart. OZ. Or OZ. I don't like those, the Opera. Ah, uh, the Super Legera is... It's okay. Cyclone. I actually really like those, the Cyclones. I might take the Cyclones, actually. Rhoda. Rhoda Stipstream. Battle. I am really picky. Now, this is these are the perfect rims for a Ford Mustang. Like, these, these are just so... They just look so good. <laughs> and, of course... The standard ones are already on there. So I guess we'll get the Cyclone. I guess the 16 inches. I, I like having some tire on my car. It's just m my thing. Carbon fiber and wide body kits haven't been played free yet. So we make the car look a bit different. In my opinion, I d I'm not super tuning-like. But I do like, you know, a car looking... I just, I just like that. Oh, I actually pulled the burnout there. Now, mostly I'm not with the whole visual mods. I like uh, performance mods much better. So, that's why I'm driving like in this district. I'm driving that way. Then we'll get to the blocky bit. We're now in the blocky bit. Um, and actually, we'll go into where our... Uh, secret race would be I will go right right here look at those rims all these trash cans as well they're awesome because everywhere where you see this like bluish neon-y light there's gonna be a shop so this is a performance part shop actually you have to drive behind the fence Backwards, forwards, backwards. And our shop. It's really cool. Hey, you're really oh. kicking it out there. Nice job. If you want to keep winning, you're going to have to keep your ride on the cutting edge. These guys will help you do just that. They're stacking premium parts and gear here, so check it out and see what'll work for you. So, we get a lot of bits to make the cars faster. But we actually don't get things that improve the handling or the braking of the car. So, here we can tinker with what the car performs like. Now, what hey, I did... Swap out stock oh. parts with aftermarket hardware to slam more power from your ride. The problems that I made, uh, or did, or whatever... With the uh, single player mode of this performance bit, is actually you have to install every package after each other. Because there are bits in the street package that will go on the car together with the extreme package. But you won't notice that. So actually, when you say, oh, I want just the extreme package because that will make the car the fastest. Actually, it won't. Because you're missing some bits from the street package. Because they don't get replaced by better parts in the next package. So those bits actually stay on the car. So if you want to follow up my advice. First install this package. Then this package. Then this package. Then you know that the car's got the full upgraded uh, yeah, bits and pieces on it. So I don't actually have enough bank. Why did I say bank? How much does it cost? Total cost? I get a 10% discount. I've got no idea why, but, you know. I've got a hundred and... thousand... Oh. Yeah, I do indeed m miss a bit of, uh... You can change the timing of your monster by upgrading the ECU and boosting more ponies from it. I can actually do this. Now, the next bit that you do is... You can say, oh, I want it from a real sponsor, or I just want it from the game. It doesn't affect, like, the complete car any bit at all, you know. It just, 
it's just a brand name, so you can say, oh, I want uh, Noise Speed or HKS or InGen, DC Sport, Aero Speed, AEM, HP Racing. Now, I like HKS because uh, Rachel is sponsored by HKS. <laughs> fuel filter, ah, fuel filter, Apex integration, I guess you could say. You know, I'm not gonna do anything with the NFSU2 thing. I'm not like. Hey. Tighten your gearbox and shorten your throws by upgrading your transmission and relaying that power to the pavement. I've never actually seen a, a Peugeot with a replaced differential, but I guess you can. So yeah, let's replace our uh, replace our differential, and we've got a, a tenner left. Now this car game does not include any bits having to do. Uh, with police and losing your ride. So actually slamming on a lot of expensive parts is worth it in this game. In Need for Speed Most Wanted though, if your car gets nicked by the police, then, well, you're gonna be sorry for slapping expensive bits on the car that don't affect the physical handling of your car. Because the funny thing about this game, if you slap a spoiler on your car, it actually works. It actually gives you downforce. Which is cool. So let's go onto the motorway and find some guys to race with because this is actually what street racing is. Driving on the highway and then inviting somewhere, someone or being invited to a street race. A race on the street. And I'm using my directional keys which... Jesus man, I've never seen someone changing lanes like that. Like actually going in that sharp, like that you're like vertically on the road. It's crazy. This is a Volkswagen Golf. Yo, check this, yo. You might be feeling a big gust of wind soon. I'm not sure what you said right there. I do know that I have the lead on you, and oh, he went, <laughs> he went around the corner. Actually, I'm losing the lead on him. Going on to the wrong side of the road. He actually had a hard time keeping up with me. Through that. Ah, he actually did it well. <laughs> Listen to the engine. These can get really boring. Come on. Make me win. No. Golf is good. Jesus, man, come on. I guess my car isn't fast enough. Scraping the bodywork. I don't want to give in, but I. No, I don't want to lose, but I, I'm not gonna win probably. So. Yeah. Come on, be on the wrong road. Come on, gain more. worked come on it didn't work no I'm going into Beacon Hill
This is actually something I never did before. Like, I would never go into the city on these outrun races because I just knew I was gonna fuck up once and fuck up twice, but I guess if I keep this weaving about up, I can get a lead on him? Yeah, I actually went the wrong way. But then again, he's gonna get back to me. No, he is not. No, I gotta give it up. You all right? That was a tight race. Awesome. So actually, going into the city can be really profitable. Also, this is not the introduction I would want to give to you to Beacon Hill. But actually, you know, it's gonna have to be this because a race brought us here. Welcome to Beacon Hill, everybody. Welcome. I was actually planning on staying in like the bigger bit of the city. Nah, I'm not gonna get that. And there's also Burger King. We have that here. Also, going in with a crash helps as well. That's another Golf. I don't want to race a Golf because I know Golfs are pretty good cars now. So I don't want to. Don't want to race the Golf. Jesus Christ, man! This is a Focus. Let's let's, let's see what a Focus can do. Some fast laning, man. Go ahead, step right up. I'm living in the fast lane, baby. Tuning in the fast lane, baby. Fast lane daily is a really good show for car enthusiasts. Come on, focus. Am I crazy or has he got nitrous? Jesus Christ, man! What the fuck did he do? He actually crashed while going very fast over a jump. Man, you lit it up out there. Don't get much better than that, boy. Now, this is the thing Need for Speed Underground 2 does a lot of times, you know. You're racing with someone and then they jump over something, make a wrong steering move and then they nearly kill themselves. Or that's just the way Ford Focus drivers, you know, drive. My uncle's got a Ford Focus. I can assure you he doesn't drive like that. That's a Hyundai Escape. Or Coupe, I guess. Hey, hey, what up, kid? Yo, you got any details and rumors of racing around the Hotel Plaza area? Yo, I heard it's a bunch of punks with more bank than brains. Should be easy picking. If you near, man, check it out. Let me know what the deal is, son. Okay, so this is the, the message about the secret race. Uh, the secret race is in the Hotel Plaza area as you can probably make out of a like, phone call so I guess we're gonna drive home and see if that race is actually there um, Hotel Plaza is in the city center well not really in the city center but you know as a kid I didn't really know what English was all about so I was like city CDR what could that possibly mean? it stands for city center Shitty center. Welcome to Shitty Center. How can I help you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm not racist or anything. Really, I'm not racist, but sometimes, you know, I'm not even gonna start with that because you're gonna get a lot of hate in the comments if you do that in your video. Okay, awesome. So yeah, let's have a look at what we can achieve like in the street races in this district. Maybe there's a secret race? I really hated the secret races because my game would always like stop giving me new races at a, a, a certain time. And I would never know what was wrong. Guess I have to go back. To the future! Hello. This is the same as Coop that we just met. Follow the shitty dirt road. And then eventually we should be seeing a race on this road. This might not be Hotel Plaza though. I 
I do know that my garage or garage or whatever you want to say it like is in the Hotel Plaza area. Er area. Although I'm do starting to doubt that. Hotel Plaza is either here oh, or there. I guess it's there because the sign like right here is pointing that way. <laughs> I mean I never knew like what the city these districts were like called so this might be the first time I'm actually gonna finish this game I never finished this game by the way because it always used to bug out and like never show any races anymore I guess you could say that so this is a known race like that we know that that race is there but there's another race in this district somewhere that is secret and that isn't actually on the map until I find it. I guess you could say. Or I never understood what was wrong with my game. No. Oftenly there were races popping up in this thing. Uh, I guess we're still in Hotel Plaza. This game is really interesting. I'm losing it, everybody. Suomi Lewis. Suomi, which language is that actually? I remember Suomi being a language. Like when you have a DVD and you put it in your DVD player. At least in the European versions, you had like language selection and there always was the language in there saying Suomi. I never knew what Suomi meant. Also, when driving into a new district, uh, like in the top middle of the screen, yeah, Hotel Plaza, see? It should give in that, like, where you are. And it actually did. So I'm very thankful for for that because I never knew where it was. See, we know that that sprint race is there. And it's so annoying when I can't find a race. <laughs> this is the biggest problem I would always have with like this game, like finding the secret races or not understanding what the secret races work like. Yo dog, good to see you rolling out tonight. There's some action in the Hotel Plaza area. No line on an exact location, but it should be easy to find. I'm heading that way. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we drove into the Hotel Plaza area again, so we were actually outside of the Hotel Plaza area. So it should be like right behind here or something. Ah, uh, it's the drag ra draft race, dra drag race right here. This is a secret race. You see, it didn't pop up on the map. If we drive into it, it also doesn't pop up on the map. But we know where it is. Hey dog, this is gonna get hot. If you feel you can pop that right off, right then. Roll up to the start line. Yay, drag racing. My favorite thing in the world. Short shift, fuck. Make it green, make it green. Nope, good shift. Yeah, it, it's a good shift. I mean, perfect shifting is the way to go. I always will be. You can actually choose to go to the heights. Perfect shift. I actually was late on shifting there. Oh, I'm actually in fifth. I can now just keep throttling up. First of the three. And I won. I don't know what was wrong with my opposition, but I made it. 
Select a sponsor. Okay, this is a cool thing. Hey dude, I just sorted through the last stack of contracts. A lot of sponsors want to sign you up for the Underground Racing League. So I picked the best of the best for you. Just let me know who you want to sign with. Okay, so this can be really annoying. Um, like, selecting a sponsor like Ghost comes into view like really, really quickly and you're like, what the fuck? What should I go for? I have no idea how this works, contracting. Like, I always used to go for like a brand that I knew something about, so I used to go for Edelbrock all the time. I'm not sure if I can pop out of the uh, the video. I guess you can have a look. Free vehicle from Bayview car lot. Build a car that's featured on one DVD cover. Contract comp completed after winning three URL races. Three races of sponsor's choice and nine additional races of driver's choice. Signing bonus. Each URL victory and sponsor race purse. This race purse is a bit lower. Each URL vi victory is the same. But the signing bonus is a bit higher. I guess if you drive like three races and you get a URL victory like three times a thousand and a hundred you don't get that out that higher signing bonus I'm not quite sure a signing bonus is 300 and this is 275 25 that's 875 so this is higher on the signing bonus but lower on the race purse I guess the race purse, if I get three times that, or the difference between 300 and 200, I guess, I guess I'm better with Street Glow, but I'm not sure. So we actually went with Street Glo Glow. Street Glow is our, uh, our sponsor. I'm not quite sure if we have to actually, you know, make the car stickering, stickered with uh, Street Glow. Hey, I wanted to give you the heads up. Now that you're under contract to the sponsor, you've got to complete some specific events to complete your deal. You see the X icons? That's them. Get over there and tear it up. I'll talk to you later. So those are the sponsor races. I'm not quite sure what races they are. Now we have to do the magazine covers, and we have to do another few things. I actually want to screw some performance bits on my car. Um, to make it a little bit faster. Also, we can have a look if, uh, like, there are new cool cars in the car lot. I don't think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> Tearing through the town, like... Another, uh, great thing about this game is something I can't feature because I don't have the copyright, like, thing. But... This um, in this game you have music, and the music of this game is really off my taste. Hey, There's a you bit. Hey, found it. Well, now you know where Mega Low Parts is at. It doesn't have the biggest selection, but it does have all your basic tuner needs. Plus, they're always open, so you can cruise on by anytime. Check it out and see if there's anything you can use. Oh yeah, Mega Low Parts is a, I think, a real part shop in the world. And because they are like sponsor of this game, you can get parts in the game cheaper than in all the other tuning shops. So you might as well come here. What I was saying is uh, there's music in this game. And the game music is really of my taste. I love the music in this game. But I'm not allowed to feature it. And I f at first I was like, oh, let's be a rebel. Let's just do it. And then I, the new copyright claiming system came in and I was like, wow, they can really, really get vulgar on you. They can really be, you know, aggressive toward you. And I was like, ah, but I don't want to go through that. I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to do anything with the music. I'm sad, but it's the way this game works. I'm sorry. Tighten your ride and get rid of that stock suspension for firm hold and grip. Bill Stein, HP Racing, H&R Springs, Coney, Hibak, Bill Stein, HP Racing. I'm not sure what to go for, so I'm gonna go for HP Racing just because I read all the Harry Potter books. Oh fuck, and I forgot the other. <laughs> Never mind, it doesn't. 
Huh? Oh, you can see the height of the car changes when you go return to stock or like go into the package that I've got right now. <laughs> That's actually quite cool. Uh, nitrous oxide, tires, brakes, weight reduction, turbo. Those are not available, but we can go for the nitro. Nitrous oxide is the glycerin of the race world. Rack it under your hood to give your ride that extra power when you need it. Press NOS! Now! Do it now! HKS? Do we have HKS here? No. We have Skunk 2 or DC Sports. And go for Skunk 2. And HKS was actually what I wanted to do, so. I guess when when tuning up your real car, I would go for as many of the same brands as possible. Simply because the parts that are in it will be like adjusted to each other to make the car faster. If you know what I mean. You know, uh, when, when parts are tuned up against each other so they will uh, work together very well, that you know, makes me feel more conf confident about the car than actually using parts like randomly. Like I want that from HKS and I want that from Edelbrock and I want this from, you know, another performance maker. I mean, uh, if you put all those different bits together in one engine, it might give a very positive outcome. It might also give a very negative outcome. But I'd say, you know, making your car all adjusted to itself seems a lot, you know, a lot better to me. Okay, so we've got a cold air intake system. That's actually as simple as an open air filter or an intercooler. HKS. <laughs> Replace headers. I'm not quite sure what headers are. Camshaft. A camshaft is a shaft with, uh, yeah egg-shaped uh, things on it that are off-center and they push down your um, push down your valves to open up for your like internal combustion chamber it's a really cool thing but I, I'm not quite sure the, the mild camshaft might have sharper cams on it so the valve will be open for a shorter time so there's more compression to be built in the compression chamber or yeah that yeah inner workings of an engine really interest me and cam gears the cam gears are the gears that connect the two cam shafts together and uh... what the fuck do you call it? <laughs> um, You've got a piston, then you've got a push rod, and then you've got your thing below that that drives the whole thing. The drive shaft, I guess you could say, but it's not the drive shaft, I think. Because the drive shaft is the thing that runs between the differential and the gearbox. Oh my god, it turns your car! That's so cool. So it's got a built-in screensaver. Okay, replace headers. Not sure what headers are. Performance exhaust. I don't have the money for the performance exhaust or the, the headers. So I guess, yeah. Jesus. I think you could say it's the drive shaft. Oh, um, I forgot to do something. I'm gonna do that at the shop. I'm gonna drive home now. And we'll get to the sponsor races like in the next episode or something. Jesus, I'm a big... I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm not sure what just happened in the video. I just stopped everything and started discussing with myself how an engine works. Because I stepped into the um, into the the game that ga in the world of car mechanics. I stepped into that world knowing a couple of uh, things about the engine in English. Then I had to translate everything to Dutch for myself to try and understand what the teacher is talking about but now I have to translate everything back to English to explain a bit to you guys if you don't know how an engine works engines are really interesting things 
and they work really well as you can hear from the engine noise from my little Peugeot actually the little arrow on the right tells you when to shift up oh fuck no something went really wrong there <laughs> if that would have happened uh, in, in a race then I would probably have a problem and in real life my car would have been flat like as flat as a flat building a flat building is called a flat building because the building is very flat I'm flattered by flat buildings enough flat okay enough enough about the flat wow <laughs> I make myself like smile sometimes okay no Rachel trying to explain anything to me performance tuning and dyno we have been here before Yokohama now this is a really cool place because here you can tune Tighten your car. Your by adjusting power and handling for each type of race, so you can push your car to the max. The dyno and test track will help you do that. Now, performance tuning is done for the all the types of races in the game: circuit, drag, drift, street axe, and URL race. Now, what makes me really wondering, you know, why you would do this, is the only thing I want to change about my car is for in the city like driving in the city so that would Im imply circuit and sprint now sprint isn't even a different thing I can choose here I guess circuit also applies for the race uh, for the for the city driving I hope it does because that's what I'm interested about <coughs> What I like about this is that I've tuned Mustangs in this game that were, were like And this car is like down down here and in the other thing it was like up here somewhere and I was like what? <laughs> this car is weak <laughs> Little Peugeot you are weak So tune settings I can now tune no, the suspension like Suspension controls how your ride reacts to changes in terrain and sideways forces like cornering. The suspension components work like a team and must be tuned together for them to work properly. A general tuning guideline is to adjust your sway bars, then your shocks, followed by your springs. Yeah, so what he said is already what, uh, what's awesome. Of course, lowering your ride can be really cool. I'm just gonna... Oh, that's actually highing my ride. I'm gonna make it incredibly low, just because I wanna be a riser. Uh, you can also uh, oh, uh, high up the rear and keep the front low. It doesn't really matter. Uh, front springs, you can harden your springs, which make the car more bouncy. I guess, in general, this game is like, the harder the better. You know? But that makes the car more slidey. Now the sway bars are really what's interesting. You need incredibly hard sway bars. You want your car to stay as horizontal as possible through that throughout the race. Sway bars like they do uh, like the sideways movement of your car. So these springs will go in. I'm now pointing at the car, not at the diagram. Um, like this bit will go down, and that bit will go up now the sway bar actually alters that I guess if I go out of this menu you I can show you better so this bit this wheel well becomes like a smaller space in height than that side so it actually yeah it rolls over and that's what your sway bar does your springs actually only do the up and down movement I hope I make sense so you can also your change your competition's going to be coming at you strong so you're going to want to adjust your acceleration and top speed modify your tranny's final drive ratio to get you popping off real tight but don't forget about shift points because they got to be tweaked too now this it's not um it's not advice to you to do this right now because you can't see what this do does to your gearbox because i didn't modify the gearbox i didn't make the gearbox better but the final drive ratio is basically what happens in your differential. If you change the gears in your differential, the final drive will change. So, 
let's say after your gearbox you uh, decide to go from a very big gear to a very small gear your final drive will get very uh, difficult for your engine to actually power your wheels but eventually you will go really really fast and if you do it the other way around your very small gear has to power a really big gear it actually becomes very easy for your engine to pull away from a stoplight but you won't have an incredible high speed just because your final drive is like that Aerodynamics. Hey, yo, man. You want to cut through the air quicker and grip the road tighter, right? The faster you go, the more front and rear downforce will be created. That downforce of air equals more grip, because your ride's getting pushed down onto the road. Yeah, you heard it right. Try it out and see. Exactly. What he says is exactly right. If you have a splitter on the front of your car, your car gets pushed down. And because I've got front wheel drive, front uh, frontal downforce is really important. That does mean that the rear of my car will cut out, like, a lot of times. I won't have any understeer. I have a lot of oversteer. Just because I don't have... Yo, listen here. Any your that. electronic control unit regulates air and fuel mixtures to your engine timing. Remapping the ECU gives you the ability to fine-tune engine power at each RPM and squeeze some serious power out of your ride. Know what I'm saying? Well, you know what he says. If I do this, I will have at higher RPMs a lower speed, but I want to get to that speed very fast. I don't need the power to stay in that speed a lot. I want a high acceleration and I want a decent top speed. But I guess if dr when driving in, in the city it's like you want that top speed on the highway to be able to outrun those uh, nitrous other guys. Oxide. We're going B.I.G. big. This here bottled up nitrous gas gives your ride a temporary boost of power when the cool gas is ejected into your engine. Tune it up, bro. Okay, so now we're going to do a test run. I adjusted it a little bit. Let's see what it does. It probably isn't very impressive, but... Eventually, I will have to do this for my job as well. As you can see, my sway bars aren't really that stiff, but the car doesn't topple over side to side that much. Not as much as it used to. That's what that does. I was trying to get the back to kick out, but it won't. So, let's see what the nitrous does. Of course, it's really impressive because I was going downwards. You know, the pack won't really kick out in this car. I mean, it really stays a lot of control in this car. Um, where it's more noticeable, and that's actually in a very different game, Mafia 2. In Mafia 2, I drove a Citroen DS, which is the first front-wheel drive car in the world. It's really awesome. But in that game, I uh, actually was really able to explain how controllable that car is on ice. I mean, just because it's got front-wheel drive. But the engine weight is on top of the wheels in the front and it really, really grips on the ice. And it's really weird to say that, but it's true. Also, your car likes being front-wheel drive better than rear-wheel drive. But it really has an advantage. Like, you have an advantage here where you have a disadvantage there. So, you know, in uh, circuit racing, you can better have a front-engine car and a rear wheel drive setup while in handling courses it's ha handier to have a front wheel drive car and a, fr a front engine so not like Porsche being li really weird and having a rear engine and four wheel drive Porsche is weird I like Porsche though G good cars so yeah that's kind of what the, the tuning and dyno does it stiffens up and weakens some things in your car so yeah, quit tuning, quit to the garage. I guess this is going to be the end of the episode. I, it's been not really me working hard to progress in the game, but I did get to explain a lot of things, and I get, got to drive my car uh, and tune it a bit. So yeah, I like that. Uh, I'm going to save here. It's probably not going to actually save here. So I'm going to spawn in the city again.
like something like that stupid. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment or a like or a favorite or a share or anything. <laughs> anything, please get me more views, everybody. It really feels like that when you ask people to work for you. Like it really feels like you're begging them to do something with your video. You actually don't have to do it unless you actually like it. And I still like that there are wire wheels right there. <laughs> I mean, who's going to have wire wheels on a European, well, city car? I really like the way my Peugeot is looking, though. So, yeah, I hope you liked this video. It's been a bit weird. And, uh, yeah. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Not the button I meant to press. Bye.